So let's bow our heads. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that's taken place thus far in the service. Yes. We thank you that we are gathered in your name. And your word says where two or more are gathered in your name, Father, that you are there in the midst. So Lord, we receive your presence. We receive you. We receive your spirit. We receive your son, Jesus. And Father, we ask that you take control now, God, that this word that is spoken today, that your word is spoken, not mine, Lord God, but God, that you would use me. And Father, God, that all honor, glory, and praise, and attention, and focus, and everything may be brought on you and to you. So be with us now, Lord God, and Father God, anything that is not, Father God, of your spirit, anything that is not like you, anything, Father God, that would be totally, Lord God, and opposite of you, Father God, we just ask right now, God, that you would remove it and let your presence take full control, full place in this, in this church today. We ask this now in Jesus' name, God, we believe and we are respected and received. Amen, amen, and amen. 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 I want to just uh, touch on something that I think all of us, even, you know, I'll even say even the, the, the children of that, and that is my enemy. So does anybody here not have an enemy or never had an enemy? So every one of us here probably got somebody that we can probably say, the devil included, okay, mm -hmm. yep. is our enemy. Somebody that don't like us in school. Right, some little girl, somebody that uh, might be a neighbor, somebody that might be a homeboy. <laughs> I'm touching on something he already gone through. Anyway, somebody that might it could be a school teacher. We even think that's an enemy. Yeah. Our, our, our co-workers, maybe <laughs> our boss, the people that's writing our check, the enemy. And I think that every one of us, even still, our enemies, and sometimes, and in, in our enemies, I, I can personally say that it. It, it gives me, it has given me pleasure to say that that person is my enemy because it lets me know, okay, I'm, you know, you and I were totally different. But the truth of the matter is, I think if everyone was really thinking, there's something inside, you know, whether we're saved or not, that says, that's not right. I don't, you don't feel good about knowing somebody out there either don't like you or somebody that you don't like. And that if you see him in the mall, man, that's my enemy. If you got to go to work every day around the enemy, it can't feel good. But, but how did this thing happen? How did it come about that they were my enemies? Somebody that we had a relationship with. Somebody that we were married to. That's my enemy. I'm going to hit home with something really personal. In the church. How is that possible? That's my... That used to be my sister, my brother. You know, hey, pray, you know what I'm saying? Now I'm my enemy. So that's the subject, the topic, the point I want to focus on today is my enemy. Turn with me in your Bibles with Matthew chapter 13. If you got your phone, you got the, um, you have to use the, um, the Bible app on your phone. Don't worry, I'm not going to trip if I see you on your phone. But I know some people, you know, because it, it would appear that way, but I know that that's technology that people use the phone. You got your, amen, praise God, okay. Matthew chapter four, 13. Um, you guys know me just as a teacher. I can stay on the subject and I just take the scripture and just go. But in the interest that we have children, young people here today, and it's Sunday, and I smell something good. So <laughs> I want to make sure <laughs> I don't make sure that um, um, that I get on point. Okay, I'm gonna start just I'm just gonna pull something out really quick. Verse 25. This story is the story Jesus was telling about telling the parable of the, the weeds. And the seeds and good ground and whatnot, but that's not the topic. I want to just pull verse 25. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So this person who has this crop, this person who has this business, this person who has something going on, the Bible's saying, Jesus is teaching that listen, while he was sleeping, while you were sleeping, while I'm sleeping, the enemy comes, this person, the devil, whom everyone will call our enemy, comes and amidst what's good, plants something bad. So amongst the good seed, the good soil, everything, he put weeds. And then look what he did at the end. The Bible says he went away. So isn't that like somebody, while you mind your own business, while you're going on with your life, while you done made up in your mind to do the right thing and push on and keep it moving, somebody in your backyard 
somebody in your business, somebody you, you don't know what's going on, they are putting something in the midst of it. They ain't got no business. Somebody creating mess in the midst of what you got that's going on good. I just need one witness this morning. That's all. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You know what I'm saying? Amen. In the middle, I'm, I'm saying, okay, and while you're sleeping, serious. you're thinking everything's fine. It's Christmas. I got my kids. I got my husband. I got everything. But somebody doing something they got no business, putting mess in what you got going on is good. Mm -hmm. yeah. And guess what they do? It says at the end, then they take off. They disappear. Oh, like they ain't, they ain't did nothing wrong. Y'all got me so far? Yeah. Amen. 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 Chapter 10, Matthew chapter 10, verse 36. And if you guys need it later on, let me know. I'll be happy to. But I'm going to move really fast in a second. Thank God for his word. Amen. Amen. Jesus talking about, after he sent the disciples out, they became apostles. He sent them out to do his word, to do his, his business, to preach the gospel. They were servants of him. And so he's saying, listen, in the midst of you all who choose to follow the Lord, choose to do right. Sister Mika, Sister Michelle, my man, and any man, you're doing the work of the Lord. The thing is, okay, I'm doing the work for God. I'm doing the right thing. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And look what it says in verse 36. This is Jesus speaking this. He says, a man's enemies will be the members of his own household. A person can say, how in the world? I'm doing the right thing. I'm doing the Lord's business. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. How in the world can I have enemies in my own household? Does that, does that make any sense, Joseph? Enemies in your own house. Don't make any sense to the mind. It don't make sense to me. But Jesus, this is my blood now. Okay? And when we're talking about household, we got to keep this in mind. The household is everybody that lives in the house. We're talking about my wife. We're talking about my, my, my kids. We're talking about my mom. Whoever lives in the household, if I got people staying with me till they get on their feet, they are in my household. But he's specifically talking about family here. In this portion of the scripture, Jesus is talking about family. They didn't have a, a, a such thing as people live in and you know come and stay. It was, it was family. And sometimes the household was really big. But Jesus is saying, listen, on this journey I'm sending you on, on this walk, your enemies sometimes will be those that are in your household. And what's crazy as well, he wasn't even talking about the last day, which we know we're in right now. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, let me move on here. Go to Proverbs chapter 25, verse 21. Thank God for the word. Chapter 25. I'm sorry. Pastor said chapter 25. 25, verse 21. This is a proper scripture. We've heard it before many times. If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. Mm. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. In doing so, you will heat burning coals on his head. And guess what? Hallelujah. And the Lord will reward you. <coughs> so we say, listen, man, this person did something foul to me. This person stole from me. This person lied on me. I done gave this person my last. And look what they did. Quick story. I had a person in my life before I met my wife. And we were married. And we had established a church. We had things um, just doing a powerful work for the Lord. And so it turned out, you know, and the story is not about to try to attack. It's just, just, just telling the story. It turned out that the sister ended up getting on drugs real bad. And so, of course, I found out about it, like, oh, Lord, you know, and, you know, we all done did our things and whatnot, but I'm like, wow, wow. And so me still being a pastor, me still being a, a, a leader, I'm just like, wow. And if you don't know anything else about life, one of the things you don't do, even in your own regular household, you don't tell people your business. You keep people out, no matter what's going on in your household, you keep people out of your business. You don't y'all two people, y'all need to notice for future reference. No matter what y'all go through, D and young lady. Keep people out of your business in your household. No matter how things get good, keep people out of your business. You, you learn that in life. You know what I'm saying? Family, keep people out of your business. Keep them out of yes, your house. Yes. So being a man of God, people might say, well, listen, you're a man of God, and you know a lot of preacher, pastors and bishops and whatnot. You ought to tell No, you don't do that because I've learned. I'm preaching on the day. I'm telling you what I've learned. My enemies, 
my same church household. And I come to find out sisters, brothers, and sitting in front of the kids, not being vulgar. Not only was she had gotten on drugs, she began to prostitute. And what's worse, she began to she was prostituting not only in my neighborhood, sister, she was prostituting in my own townhouse complex. So check this. I'm going to the store. In my mind, I'm thinking, I wonder if, I'm keeping it real with you, I wonder if, oh my God, if this dude, I don't even know, I wonder if he slept with my wife. I'm keeping it real with you. Yeah. I'm going to the, to, 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 the, to, the, to the McDonald's, you know, boys serving the hamburgers. and what, I wonder if, yeah. I'm seeing other men yeah. of God in the church. I wonder if, yeah. the dudes, the men that are in my apartment complex, I'm seeing them and I'm like, my next door neighbor. And I couldn't tell nobody. She began to consistently go on the streets. She began to do her thing and whatnot. Guess what? I'm watching this here. I'm watching we get electricity bill. The money being used for that is gone. The lights getting ready to be shut off in two days. The rent man's coming. Listen, y'all got to get out. What happened to the money? Family's coming over. Family's watching the change and watching the house and the mess. They come. We won't even let them in the house and this and that. They want this. There's a change. We're not answering the phone. She not answering her phone. What's going on? Everything is looking at me, and I can't tell nobody. And at the end of the day, I'm just bump, jumping over a whole lot of stuff here. No matter what was going on, was transpired, was being heard, being seen. Guess who it looked? Who the eyes were upon? It was upon me. Because I'm the pastor. I'm the, the leader. I'm the, the the husband. I'm the man of head of the household. At the end of the day, I come. I decided to just turn the page and leave. And so I literally see this sister with another man walking down the street. Her pimp, boyfriend, what are you going to call it? I ended up seeing her with different men. And good God Almighty, you're talking about sister, somebody want to throw, man, what? That's my wife. And we done did, we done had so much together. She still got my name. And we've gone through this and that. She's my wife. And I'm looking at her deteriorating over the course of time in the street. I'm, I'm watching, my God, my God, my God. I can't even think right. The Bible says if she's hungry, feed her. When she's thirsty, give her something to drink. So guess what I did? I did. Hey, sister, here, come take me. Here go a bottle of water. Here go, here go a couple of dollars. I'm, I'm watching her, the, the boyfriend, the pimp, whatever you're going to call it, don't even want her talking to me. She's still my wife. How you doing? Whatever. One night, I see her in the streets doing her thing. I come up to her to try to talk to her. We have a discussion. Turns out, she freaks out. She, she runs. Calls the police. I ain't done nothing to her. I ain't touched her. I ain't cussed her. I ain't spit on her nothing. I ain't call out of her name or nothing. And guess what didn't happen? I go to jail. The Bible's still telling me this woman, who I never laid a finger on, don't have no history of domestic violence, no history of nothing, put my hands, men or women, and to see this person still show up in court with another man, hugged up in the back of the courtroom, and I'm like, oh my God, how do I go from this to being locked how does this happen and i gotta tell you people in my life even still even to this very very second i still didn't fully understand it don't know why god allowed it but i know my job was to still it's my enemy to still feed to show love to, you know to, 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 to give her something to drink and to pray for her and see it goes on to say listen that at the end of the day and although i'm not looking for a reward the bible says the end of this whole mess God's going to reward me. Okay? So I'm going to hold y'all attention there real quick. Turn with a couple more scriptures. Verse, well, Romans chapter 12, verse 20. It's going to make sense in a minute, y'all. Amen? Amen. Amen. I believe it's making sense now, but I really want to get on this. Okay. Okay. He talks before he's talking about avenging. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Somebody does you wrong, give attention. But look what he says. Thank you, Lord. On the contrary, not that you do vengeance, not that you do wrong, not that you do this. On the contrary, listen to what he said. Again, if you're enemy hungry, he's taken from what we just read in Proverbs. Enemy hungry, feed him. He's thirsty, give him a drink. He said, in doing this, you will reap, he will heat coals of burning, burning coals on his head. Do not overcome. Do not be overcome by evil, 
will overcome evil with good. And I got to tell you, the scripture came up in my mind while I was going through this. Because the Bible said, do good. And guess what? It's going to make that person feel like fire in their head. Anybody here know, like, if you really want something, let's, I mean, I'll be the first to tell you. Somebody did me wrong, I want something done wrong to them. That's a pretty natural thing. Has that ever happened to you? So a girl and said something. Yeah. Girl and said something. <laughs> you understand something behind you, Sister Louise? Yeah. Somebody said, okay, so she she's supposed to make you up. Yeah. Somebody did something to you, you'd be like, you know what, let me go get my, I ain't going to say, say what you probably want to go get. But y'all get what I'm saying? So the anime, anime somebody did something, did you wrong? You'd be like, you know, if I had, Lord have mercy, if I could do this and get it with tell, Lord there is Jesus. And so I'm going through this like, I, I wish I could take a pot of coal, them, them charcoal briquettes from, from the barbecue, just put it on there. Because that's what you think. <laughs> yes. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? When you read the scripture, you, you, you're doing this good to them. I'm going to take these coals and put it on their head. Ah! <laughs> what the Bible said. But let me tell you what Let me tell you what it's saying. I want my wrongdoer, I want my enemy to be shamed of the lie they told on me. Anybody with me? Right. Mm. I want them to be shamed for mistreating me. I want them to be shamed for what they just, they got animosity, they got beef, they got, you know what I'm saying, envy against me. D, D walk around and keep his hair tight, D in shape, clothes be, boom, okay, boom. People got envy of D. You ain't did nothing to him. So, can you read with you? People got, you know what I'm saying? Man, sister, and me, she just, she keep her house together, and she just mind her own business. She'll never be. They have envy, sister, and me. Seriously. So Michelle put on Facebook a couple of weeks ago, she got a new hairdo. We got the braids and the mohawk. Yeah. Man, <laughs> 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 got lip. I don't like her lip. She, why she got a lip? She ain't did nothing. This, this is a, okay. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah, that's okay. Right. Sister, because she got it going on. She peaceful. She mind her own business. She got a sweet spirit. And anybody that you've already told that you're pregnant, how in the world can she keep a smile on her face in the midst of it? But my point is, the whole thing is that we want to do these acts towards people because they should feel ashamed for what they've done, what they've said, how they act. Uh -huh. The coals of fire is about getting people to be feeling some guilt about what they done did. Mm -hmm. yeah. They done did some foul stuff to you. You know what I'm saying? And I want to tear you to 20 pieces. I want you to, let's keep it real, I want you to go to hell for what you did. I want you to walk out of the middle of the street and the car hits you like, okay, done deal. I, I want that. I want to take my fist and just put it all across your, I want to be, I want to shoot you with the biggest gun. I want that. But listen, more than anything else, how about some guilt? How about I'm sorry, Sister Louise, for what I said? How about I'm sorry for those in my household with a mystery? How about I'm sorry? How about, listen, I feel guilty, oh my God. How about at the end of the day, they come to Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, I was wrong, if nothing else, for how I treated D, how I treated his girlfriend, how I treated Michelle, what I said, what I thought. How about that? And how about they say, Lord, I want to be saved. Glory be to God. Our whole thing, the premise of, of New Zion Assembly, what we're building, what God is doing for us, and what we're still establishing right now, is that we want people to be saved. You know why? Because sister, that's what Jesus wanted. Yeah. Amen. And what greater play, what greater person, listen to me, I'm trying not to keep this long. And my wife's remember said it many times, I just, I, I just can't, I just can't not say it. Y'all hear me this here. The Bible says that Jesus went about teaching, preaching, and healing. Right? Every place he went, he taught, he preached, he healed. I want you to get this, Mr. Mika. You know what I'm saying? Y'all bring some tissue. Anyway, no matter where he went in the three and a half years of Jesus' ministry, there's not one person that came to Jesus, says Louise, that Jesus didn't heal. There's not one person that came to Jesus that Jesus rejected. And what people fail to realize, the people that came to hear him, even the one he fed the 3,000 with the fish, he fed the 5,000 another time. Get this here. Those people didn't come to Jesus because they wanted to hear his message. They came for the benefits. There's this man, Jesus, if you come, if, you, if you're blind, he'll lay hands on you, you'll see. There's this man, Jesus, if you got a disease, he'll lay hands on you, you'll get healed. There's this man, Jesus, if you got a sickness, you got a headache, he'll heal you, you're going to get what you want. Every place Jesus went, the Bible says he healed them all. The disciples, there was 12 of them. 
The 12 the disciples walked with Jesus for three and a half years, right? Three and a half years, they saw Jesus do the healing. They saw, listen, we got to talk about three and a half years is a long time. Every place he went, that's all he did. And not one single person did not get what they wanted from Jesus. All the time, Sister Mika, every single time, every day, 24 hours a day, 70 weeks, that's what Jesus did. The disciples watched this, Sister Michelle, they, they saw this. They saw the person that was dead, Jesus spoke life, and that person wrote, they, they woke up, they, 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 they were alive. Every single day, dig this here. The disciples watching this, the whole thing. They're taking part. But well, here's what happened. In the garden, there was a place they were at. And Jesus was talking and having a conversation with Peter. He said, listen, Lord Jesus, wherever you go, listen, I'm, I'm with you. I'm down with you. Yeah. Peter said, listen, Lord, listen, I'll die for you. The Bible says the disciples stood a little ways off, Sister Anne, anyway. And they said the same thing, the other level. Lord, I die. We're going to go to the end of the earth. We're going to let nothing happen. We're down with you. Cool. Jesus looked at Peter. This is what the Bible says. He said, Peter, basically she can say, he said, Peter, listen, you know, once you've been converted, go strengthen your brothers. But he said, Peter, listen, listen, listen. Y'all know what I'm finna say. He said, Peter, listen, before the cock crows, he's gonna deny me how many times? Three. Three times. Now, this is Jesus talking to Peter. Again, all these disciples, it wasn't just Peter, it was mainly Peter, though, but they saw everything that Jesus did for three and a half years. There was nothing that Jesus did not do. People don't get this. It wasn't like, well, listen, I can't handle that, so come back tomorrow. No, he did it. All right? Peter walked on the water with Jesus, right? Did this here. The Bible says Peter was coming saying, Lord, is that you? Jesus invited Peter to come. Peter didn't ask to come walk on the water. Jesus said, listen, come. He said, Lord, if it's you, you know, be me to come. He said, listen, Peter, come. Gave that thing, go Peter walk on the water. Peter took out the sword when Jesus was getting ready to be taken in, right? To die, to die for you to be arrested. He took the sword, I cut the man's ear off. Guess what? Same thing. I got you, Jesus. I got you. Bang. Yeah, I'm going to kill the sword. Peter. And Jesus spoke that to Peter. Let me ask y'all this. The Bible says Jesus was taken, he was beaten before. Any of this stuff happened when he went before the, 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 the judge, let's say. They was beating Jesus with their hand, hands and fists. You got to understand this here. It wasn't just one or two. It wasn't like, you know, slapping the face. These men took their fists and they were beating Jesus. These soldiers, to be a soldier at that time, you had to be somebody that had some, 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 you had to be a big dude. You had to be rough. But they beat Jesus all in his face. They spit on him. They tore his garments. They took a thorn. See, some people thinking like the thorn, uh, uh, the wreath of thorn, is just like something from a little, you know, rose bush and just a little some pinky thing. They literally took thorns. And so the Bible tells us they pressed. If you look at the deep determination, uh, Termination of the word, the press, they literally, these thorns were long. We're talking inches. They took them. They weren't from a rose bush. They took them, the Bible said, and they pressed them into the skull of Jesus. And you can imagine, it wasn't like, oh, we'll sit this on top of you, prick. No, they was trying to hurt him. They was trying to, and so pushing them into his skull so they wouldn't move. Got to keep in mind, he kept that going until he got on the cross. And the cross, the pictures y'all see, wasn't he wearing... The thing in the... Yeah. So everything we're talking about that happened, he still had this crown of thorns on his head. And he was still beaten. He still had to be nailed to the cross. He still had to carry the cross. He still got the thorns. All the while, Jesus knowing my enemies. I fed these people, Sister Michelle. Mm -hmm. I gave them the drink. There was nobody... I, get, I healed... Thousands and thousands. The Bible speaks of the word multitudes. Multitudes in the Hebrew and Greek translation means a number that you can't even imagine. You can't count it, Sister Mika. It's so many. Go to South Florida, South Florida Fair, Fairgrounds. Oh my God, so many people. You see the people at the, uh, the other the, uh, roller coasters, all these people. Oh my God, can't count. People at the football, basketball games. You see the people in the, in the bleachers and whatnot. Can you count them? Oh my God, it's a, what do we say? A bunch of people. That's a lot of people. Oh my God, a place full. But it was so many, three and a half years, I'm coming to my clothes. This man, Jesus, who was dying after being beaten and everything else, he was about to die for the sins of the world. This man, Jesus, who never told anybody no. This man, Jesus, who knew that he was the son of a living God. 
who didn't even have to go through all that, right. was getting ready to die. And y'all people beating me. <laughs> y'all people are taking thorns and you're putting them in my skull. The disciples, you people walked with me for three and a half years. Y'all seen the miracles, y'all seen the signs, y'all seen the wonders. Let me get to the point. Where were the 12 disciples when Jesus was being beaten? Where were the 12 disciples when they were putting the thorns in his face, in his head? Where were the 12 disciples when these people were calling Jesus out his name? These men witnessed everything that was done to the multitudes of people over three and a half years. Not one of them was there at the crucifixion. And oh my God, my God, my God, this is what's worse. Every person that Jesus healed, Sister Louise, where were they at? Every person that Jesus raised from the dead, where were they at? Every blind person that Jesus gave sight to, where were they at? Every time he spoke life into somebody, where were they at? And at the end, at the very end, these enemies. Jesus, Father, forgive them for the knowledge they do. I've given everything, and guess what? He's given everything, and he's about to give his life. And that's exactly what he did. That's our Jesus. And so if anybody knows the story about having an enemy, it is Jesus. If anybody knows anything about somebody that done you wrong, somebody that done lied to you, lied on you, somebody that done promised they're going to do something that don't come through, it is Jesus. Anybody know what it is to be without, to sacrifice, to give up, even what you don't? It's Jesus. And when you have received the spirit of God in you, I don't care what age you are, you have that same spirit, which means you have the same ability to do what Jesus, Jesus did. did. Amen. 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 There's nothing about it that's, that's toxic to her. Which, listen, when Jesus left, he sent the spirit, right? When we yes. become born again, we receive his spirit. We are now filled with the spirit of God. That same spirit that Jesus left, guess what? Same spirit been around since forever. That thing is in us. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. So don't tell me, and trust me, I know it's rough. But don't tell me it's not possible because Christ put that in you and you have it. Last yeah, scripture. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 7. You already been there? This is for everybody here, okay? The Bible says, when a man's or a woman's ways, I know you know this scripture, please the Lord. Don't start shouting, says Louise. Okay. He will make even his what? Enemies. Enemies. At peace with them. Yeah. Yeah. When you do right by God, yeah. everything else will fall in place. <laughs> when you put your focus on the Lord, D, everything will fall in place. God knows y'all have a daughter. God knows that y'all are young. He knows everything. He knows y'all better than y'all know yourselves. Yes, he knows he the challenges that you go through. Trust me, I know yes, them too. We're going to talk. But putting your focus on God, God will make sure everything else falls in place. Because he knows you're responsible. He knows that you're not somebody that's abandoning her or abandoning the child. And that says a lot for you. Men that are 30, 40, 50 years old ain't thinking like Amen. that. We're going to talk. Amen. When your ways please the Lord. Anybody that's ever said anything recently and otherwise. Anybody that's ever done anything recently and otherwise. God said he's going to make peace. And at the end of the day, this is our street turn. You're going to come on top. Come on top. And be a better man. So, so no matter what's happened in the past. Okay. Let your ways please God. Anybody that's ever said. Anybody that's even thought. And have not even told you. God said he's going to make peace. And that reward we just read from the scripture, I didn't write the Bible. God wrote the Bible. God said the reward's coming. Okay. So, Danny, listen. 
God seen your suffering. God knows. I'm, 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 re I'm reluctant to say it because so many say, but you're going to get my drift. Everything that you has happened, every experience, everything that's possibly been done wrong, whether by children, neighbors, friends, people of the past, in your own household, otherwise, God said, reward's coming. Amen. Continue Amen. to please God. Everything will fall in place. Woman of God, you know, I've been preaching on, we're going to preach on the way home. Anyway, she's going to get her. But the thing is that, woman of God, know this. Be encouraged. That continue to let your ways please God. Everything else will fall in place. And the truth be told, it already has. Sorry. Amen? Amen. So, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, for this moment. We thank you for this time. We thank you for your spirit being present. Lord, I just ask, Father God, that you just... Continue, Lord God, to let what was spoken here today, Lord God, rest in the hearts and the minds and the spirits of every person present. Lord God, from the youngest to the oldest, Lord God, we know the seed has been planted. God, if it's your will that we should water it, or I should water it, Lord God, let it be. But God, please, please give the increase. Teach us, Lord God, your ways. Teach us, Lord God, to live according to your spirit. As hard as it may be, God, teach us, Lord God. To feed our enemies, to give them something to drink, and even to love, Lord God, as hard as it may be. Because, God, we believe that even them, Lord God, they can repent, they can repent, they can repent. Help us to be more like you. We ask this today in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen and amen. God bless you all.